Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being with us. My name is Tom Parrish, and I will be here with you as host for today's webinar. Our webinars are designed to understand mobility and provide you with insights into mobility across verticals. CTOs, CIOs, CMOs of Fortune 500 organizations have utilized our niche expertise to introduce mobility initiatives in their organizations. Why Endeavor? Because we are a mobility-focused organization with 250-plus experts and 11 years of niche expertise. We're leaders in providing mobility solutions to over 300 customers, including many Fortune 100 companies across the globe, and enabling them to leverage mobility. Today, we have a 30-minute presentation followed by 15 minutes of question and answer. Please feel free to raise any questions during the presentation by typing it into the Q&A chat window panel in your GoToWebinar console. Just do that whenever it comes to mind so you don't forget. At the end of the presentation, our panelists will take as many questions as possible during the Q&A session. This webinar is being recorded and will be available within 24 hours at techendeavor.com slash webinars. Our topic for today's webinar is iOS 7, Looking Beyond the Parallax. Presented by yours truly, Tom Parrish, who is a mobile strategy thought leader. We also have an esteemed guest with us, Ramanada Shetty, technical architect for iOS at Tech Endeavor. And later in the webinar, we will hear from Avinash Mishra, CEO for Endeavor. All right, so here we go. Our agenda today has six sections to it. And if I were to summarize the entire webinar, I would say it's an under-the-hood look at what Apple is doing with iOS 7. It's not just about the new user interface look. As a hardware guy myself, I'm really excited about the changes I'm seeing in the hardware all the way up through the new iOS 7 architecture. Because these new changes make some very cool new mobile features available that I think we've all been waiting for. So section one is basically a closer look at the new iPhone 5S hardware and what they've done in that. Section two is opening Pandora's box. And what we mean by that is sort of the classic definition of opening Pandora's box means to perform an action that may seem small or innocent, but that turns out to be a severe and far-reaching consequence. And that's what we're getting at here is that the new iOS 7 architecture and hardware bring about some major changes. And once you get an idea of what that's about and you take a peek at that, I think you'll be excited too. And of course, what that means is there are some great changes coming about for the enterprise that have long since been needed. The next section for migrating old applications to iOS 7 after all, once you get to the point where you see where there's some opportunity and advantage of using iOS 7, how do you go about making those changes? And on the topic of changes, or let's say migration from iOS 6 to iOS 7, Tech Endeavor has an offer for you. To you, the webinar listener, there's an opportunity, we call it the Platinum Plan, to quickly migrate your iOS 6 to iOS 7. And finally, Avinash Mishra. We'll talk about Endeavor. For those of you who haven't had a chance to get to know the company well, you'll get a chance to find out more about their years of experience in providing mobility consulting, mobile user interface experiences, mobile application development, and mobility integration, especially in the enterprise environments. Let's take a closer look at iPhone 5S. The new iPhone 5S has advanced hardware compared to the iPhone 5. It's not just a cosmetic upgrade. It has a brand new 64-bit processor, which is the first of any smartphone, with an added support for what they call an M7 motion coprocessor and related APIs. And this makes a huge difference in both battery performance and just overall faster performance for the phone or responsiveness, let's say, from a user interface perspective. Touch ID. That's one that's gotten a lot of publicity. It's a new authentication mechanism introduced by Apple, and it has the potential to become the core part of our digital identities. In the future, it could replace numerous usernames and passwords scattered across numerous platforms, applications, and services. And that's a painful thing we all experience, I'm sure. Touch ID 
will constitute as personal profile manager of your device, which contains your personal details, settings, applications, how you like it to look, where you, how often you want it to come on and turn off, and all these sort of user-specific type preferences. It's very likely that this will also be built into upcoming iPads. At the moment, there are no direct APIs that make use of custom applications for Touch ID. For now, only things linked with the Apple ID will be of use. For example, if you have an app that depends on Apple ID authentication for storing something on the Apple iCloud, if the user is not authenticated, the app will redirect you to the Touch ID authentication if you have that preset into the configuration for authentication on your phone, meaning you have to give permission to the app to use Touch ID, which is a good thing. This new M7 motion sensor and other related secondary chips will now take care of providing a lot of valuable inputs such as location without having to involve the processor. And this is going to help you avoid building software timers for synchronization that burn up processor energy. Let's take an example of a mobile app, for instance, that's meant to reduce distractions while driving. This means the mobile app will always keep track of the speed which the uh, person is traveling, all the while burning up processor energy and battery life. Now, a newer iOS 7 app can be built to take advantage of the mobile coprocessor, this M motion processor, to consume significantly lower energy and help batteries last longer. This is a real freedom from charging woes. Tech Endeavor actually has already solved this problem for a client in the transportation business. In an iPhone 5 using iOS 6, and when migrated to iOS 7, there was a significant improvement in battery life. Apple's iBeacon is an implementation of the Bluetooth Energy Profile, which enables very precise micro-location triggers for events in iOS 7 apps. A BLE, or Bluetooth Energy Profile-enabled iPhone running on iOS 7 will be able to receive location-specific messages based on its proximity to a local area network, and that phone can also act as an iBeacon itself transmitting messages to others. BLE allows for interactions as far away as 160 feet, but it doesn't require the surface contact like NFC, near-field computing. So combine this with Touch ID, and you have a much greater potential for mobile commerce applications and payments that might emerge as potential competition to NFC itself. While all of these new things are included, in the iPhone 5S, making it a better phone, there still are things that one craves from it. For example, the competing smartphones are equipped with wireless charging, NFC chips are built into it, things like that that would enable different use cases across different industries. So we'll see how these things pan out. So let's open Pandora's box here. Let's talk more about this brand new user interface and the reinvented applications that it allows layered user interface design and this thing called parallax effect and the increased emphasis on typography. All right, until now, iOS 7 was full of design that follows skeuomorphism. Yeah, that's that word. It means that it has a certain, that an app has a certain look and feel that mimics real world elements. You know, a notebook looks like yellow notebook with lines and a spiral bound on the side, but it's all, you know, electronic on a page. Steve Jobs and Scott Forstall were sort of the software gurus originally that were big on this, but this is all now changing. This is why the previous iOS had a kind of faux glass effect, and um, it used real-world symbols like clocks and cameras and icons, and had a kind of faux wood, faux leather look. That's the skeuomorphism look. And until 2010, this all worked very well. But since 2010, the year when Microsoft introduced its Windows phone that uses flat 2D design, their user interface is now moving towards a flatter, more modern elements. So inspired by Microsoft, and then, of course, Google introduced a flatter user interface in Android's ice cream sandwich, things have started to become a little bit more refined in this area. And now this is what iOS 7 is about. Apple has also gotten rid of its skeuomorphisms in its mobile OS and has moved to a design that is more modern, sleeker, and flatter. Keeping in line with the flat design, app icons have now been flattened, and there are fewer obvious buttons to tap 
and a lot of decorative elements have been removed from apps. As explained by Apple, this is the single largest change to happen to iPhone ever since iPhone is launched in 2007. And one of the most noticeable changes you'll see compared to iOS 6 and the iOS 7 is the system's font. The typography has been considered the most important element in Apple's design strategy. A lot of buttons have been replaced by the crisp and light fonts that can initiate actions on the screen. This may seem very similar to Windows Phone, but Apple adds the twist by adding things such as parallax effect on the screen. The important note to make here is, despite this significant change in the user interface, the operating system beneath is very much the same as iOS 6. The changes in the iOS run deeper than the user interface, and this is what I referenced at the beginning, the applications such as mail, photo, camera, calendar, weather, etc. have been changed to take advantage of the new user experience as well as the new hardware it's running on now. Thank you, Tom. In this slide, I'm going to talk about multitasking and the intelligent background processing that is introduced in iOS 7. So there are uh, new APIs introduced in iOS 7 which help improve the multitasking in terms of battery life, data protection, and usage of cellular data. In iOS 6, the device used to uh, stay awake even when the device is logged and a task is running in the background. But in iOS 7, when application goes to background and user locks the device, the phone goes to sleep soon after that and your task will be held until you d open a device uh, for the next time to check a mail or do something else. And the task will be divided uh, whenever a, a phone is active, and this way it helps improve battery life. So here, the overall task will take the same amount of time uh, to complete, but it is not contagious. So the app switcher uh, in, new, uh, in iOS 7, the new improved uh, UI for switching between apps. So the apps which are running in the background, a uh, user can see the uh, snapshot of the state, uh, the current state. So uh, this, uh, this can be done uh, using restoration, state restoration APIs to maintain the exact state before going to the background. And even uh, iOS 7 helps uh, to take a snapshot of this current state in the background so that whenever a user checks the background application, he will have the, the current updated data uh, to uh, check if, whether he wants to check that particular application or not. So remote notification, a new feature introduced in iOS 7. This helps developer to send a silent notification to the device so that the, the application uh, can start uh, in the background and it can do a task which, which it is supposed to do in the background. So then, then another new feature that is introduced is background transfer service. This will allow user uh, or a developer to maintain a, a large queue of uploads or downloads or any task uh, uh, to run in the background. This task can happen uh, in the background even across uh, reboots of the device. So another fetch feature that was introduced uh, is to provide minimum time interval for your application to fetch the data. So every time after uh, completing a background process, your application can be idle for a specified amount of time and it can again wake up and check for update and again it can go to the background once the task is finished. So uh, in iOS uh, 7, uh, by, by passing the right status of your background application, the system itself maintains behavior of user and it checks for uh, updates uh, depending on when user is using the application every day. So uh, this is another new improvement in iOS 7. All right, let's talk about the hardware updates in iOS 7. MapKit comes with a few major updates. Third-party apps can now take advantage of 3D map support, as in Maps app. Also can control the viewing perspective programmatically, which is very nice. Programmers can control the position and tilt of location. Now developers can ask for direction-related route right information from Apple, and they can use this information for creating an overlay. All right, let's get down into the features from a hardware dependency perspective. New OpenGL 3.1 support. Basically, as you well know, uh, OpenGL is a graphic standard for 2D and 3D graphics. So as related to the apps, things are just, um, apps are going to run faster that have graphic dependencies. And this is all being handled by additional hardware. 
iOS 7 is coming up with a new option for real-time discovery of machine-readable metadata, like barcodes. These APIs make people think maybe Apple has a plan in the not-too-distant future for mobile commerce. We'll find out more about that, I'm sure. Multipath TCP protocol support. About time. This is one we've all probably wished for. Apple has solved a long pending network switching problem. By adopting multipath TCP protocol, iOS 7 devices will now switch between available networks seamlessly when one source becomes weaker than the other. Yay. Next up, Apple's combined faster A7 processor with a coprocessor called M7, which we talked about, for capturing the most accurate motion data and in doing so with less power drain, of course. M7 chip powers many sensor technologies already adopted in earlier devices. Okay, so the M7 chip reduces a burden on main processor by handling functions, functionalities like the gyroscope, the accelerator meter. This leads to a new set of apps in the fitness category, if you think about that. Also, this, te this technology may boost Apple Maps performance in coming days. So, with iOS 7, users get a new sharing icon for sharing the file via AirDrop, as you can do on your Mac laptops and your iMacs, right? AirDrop uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to transfer any file. The file will be encrypted during the transfer, so it will be a secure transfer between devices without any prior setup. So here I'm going to talk about the common problem that most of the developer uh, faced uh, when shifting from iOS 5 to iOS 6 because Apple deprecated an API to identify device uniquely, that is uh, UDID. So this UDID API was uh, used to track devices uh, by uh, some of the third-party advertisement service providers, analytic service providers, and also uh, this particular API was used in developing some kind of licensing uh, services, and also it has been used as a second uh, secondary authorization uh, entity. So after uh, deprecation of uh, UDID API in iOS 6, uh, so the, uh, most of the developer came up with the generic solution of finding a Mac ID and tagging that uh, along with the app ID to get a unique identifier for the device. And in iOS 7, uh, uh, what Apple did is uh, it even took away uh, the Mac ID feature from the uh, SDK. So now we have a problem uh, that we need to so identify a device uniquely uh, to support some of the applications that, that were already developed. So what we did is we used a, a keychain feature. We used v a unique number generation feature to generate a unique number and store it in a keychain. Uh, even when the application uh, is deleted and uh, installed again, uh, we, we take the same uh, identifier from the keychain and we use it for the f further any task that needs to be done. So uh, Apple also provided uh, some of other APIs like vendor IDs and vendor IDs and also advertisement IDs as a replacement for uh, UDID API. All right, thanks, Ram. So let's talk about the enterprise and what kind of advantages they will see in moving applications to iOS 7. And one of the ones we've all been waiting for is enterprise single sign-on. So with iOS 7, an IT admin can allow any app to share common login credentials. So if a user has logged into any app in a shared list of apps with shared credentials, then the user will be automatically logged in to the other apps. If it, previously it was restricted to only apps created by the same vendor. Now single sign-on can be used for the apps from any vendor or app needed in an enterprise. In iOS 6, VPN can be configured for the device, but not for a specific app. Even if just one app needs VPN connectivity, all the apps will be under the VPN. In iOS 7, an IT admin can configure VPN per app. This is a great step forward to allowing, to allowing greater freedom with bring your own device policies. Another perspective is a user can be in a VPN for only one app and he can use other apps on his phone or his phone via the internet as he wants. And this also fulfills the need for connecting to two different VPNs with different apps if needed. Now in iOS 7, any app that gets installed on your device will be automatically encrypted, even if the app is not launched once. Also in iOS 7, we can restrict backing up keychain values for any new device. 
Now an IT admin can manage the list of third-party apps that can be used to open any file. This prevents risk of sending data to any untrusted third-party app. Also, via MDM, mobile device management, we can restrict which app can use cellular data and which cannot. This gives more power to the organization to have control over data usage and costs. Very nice. With iOS 7, we can share files from any iOS device using AirDrop service. This is similar to Bluetooth file transfer. In iOS 7, it uses both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to transfer the data. All data transferred using AirDrop are encrypted. So now I'm going to talk about enhanced MDM support and some of the new features which would help IT admins. The first one that I, I would like to talk about is streamlined MDM setup for any enterprise-owned devices. So basically, organization purchases a device and uh, they can assign that uh, device from a new Apple enrollment service. So providing some of the MDM uh, settings in that portal. So this enrollment process can be handled uh, via MDM solution. So when an employee gets a device sealed in a box, so he can just start using the device, just giving his domain uh, username and password to get access to the device. The next one that I'm going to talk about is app configuration and updates. So now with the help of iOS 7, IT admin can send any updates to the app silently. So app can just read those updates and uh, it can act accordingly uh, uh, from the next launch or uh, from right away. The next one that I'm going to talk about is app feedback to MDM. So now a user can give a direct uh, feedback to uh, MDM. MDM uh, admin has to enable this feature. So this way, any uh, root causing any problem will be much easier. The, the other feature that I would like to talk about is uh, preventing user from changing any corporate account settings. So now IT admins can restrict user from changing corporate account settings uh, like mail configuration, etc., from device uh, using MDM. The last feature is web filtering. The admins can whitelist or blacklist website uh, uh, from uh, new MDM. So by uh, doing this, uh, any browser or web, web views that integrated in the app will get filtered for the specific website that has been re restricted by IT admin. Okay. New tools and techniques in iOS 7, a developer's delight. Apple has released the newer Xcode and SDK for developers to be used for iOS 7 application development. The IDE and tools are specifically redesigned to work better with continuous integration frameworks than before. Also provided as a graphical debugger and optimized Objective-C programming constructs. App size restrictions have been increased. Yes, we've needed this. Now users can use their cellular connection to download files that are as large as 100 megabytes. The previous limits were frustrating to watch podcasts, iBooks, you know, or videos that were more than 50 megabytes. Now it's been relaxed for the users to access up to 100 megabytes using the cellular connection. This applies to app downloads as well. So no more worries about app size, but mind you, the best programs do consume the least resources. For iOS 7, an additional security mechanism is in place. It is extended to every file on the iOS file system, right from the installed application bundle. The files are protected by a device pin, which is chosen by the user. Apart from this, Apple now provides more robust device management support that allows any user to remotely disable device from being used with other SIM cards and networks a greater utility to avoid stolen phones being used. Of course, the MDM solutions being used in the enterprise will take great advantage of these features as well. Migrating applications to iOS 7. In order to migrate older iOS 6 applications to the new devices running iOS 7, de developers will need to make multiple changes considering the application's functionality and OS requirements. The minimum things that every developer and application owner should do is the following. Change the user interface. Know that auto layout can help an app accommodate new user interface element metrics and respond appropriately to dynamic changes in text size. And finally, work around the depreciated APIs. 
UDID, Audio Session API, Map Overlay View, and various others are some of the APIs that are depreciated. It is helpful if you simply change code to use newer APIs or work around features that avoid these APIs. I mentioned in the introduction that Tech Endeavor has an offer. It's called the Platinum Plan for Quick Migration. Now you want to get in touch with Tech Endeavor soon because this offer is only going to hold through the end of November 2013. So here's the basic offer. Tech Endeavor will take any application that you have in iOS 6 and migrate it to iOS 7 over a two calendar week time period. And then we'll do this for $2,000. So again, you want to get in touch with Tech Endeavor between now and the end of November 2013 to take advantage of this. This could really speed up the process of getting anything that you have out there in the, in the public up and running quickly on iOS 7. Thank you, Tom, for telling us about the Platinum Plan for Quick Migration. Appreciate it. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Endeavor's value add and offerings. Since 2002, Endeavor's role as the mobility integrator has been based on the four pillars of mobile strategy, mobile user experience, mobile application development, and mobile integration. Mobile strategy to help organizations look at their path to mobilization on the multiple axes of technology, security, compliance, regulation, competitive landscape, and so on and so forth. Essentially, we help organizations craft both their generic and specific response to the burgeoning mobile opportunity. This response itself may speak with the technology focus to the internal IT of the organization, or it may speak with a customer focus to the line of business. Whichever the case, Endeavor brings to bear its mobile technology expertise and its functional expertise within given business functions to build your organization's mobile strategy. Endeavor offers this expertise via its mobile opportunity assessment, which is a three to six week program where we collaborate with customers on a well-defined path to build the mobile opportunity report and the prototypes. In addition, as part of the strategy creation, we also bring to bear value-added package offerings around mobile security, mobile UX, compliance in verticals such as mobile health and mobile banking. The second pillar of Endeavor's value-add is mobile user experience. We help customers iterate to the right user experience using a proven and well-baked lean iterative UX creation process. The emphasis here is twofold. One, conceive the user experience with the overall solution and not just the mobile user interface in mind. And two, at every stage, capture inputs from the stakeholders and a focus user group. The third of the four pillars is mobile application development. Endeavor's expertise encompasses cross-mobile and web development services backed by an experienced engineering team. And in addition to the engineering team, Endeavor also has a technology consulting group whose role it is to research and prototype upcoming operating systems, new mobile design and paradigms. In essence, keep our customers up to date on the shifts in the technology landscape ahead of time. Endeavor also runs a dedicated mobile testing lab, the Endeavor Quality Assurance Lab, or EQUAL for short. EQUAL specializes in testing mobile solutions across devices, networks, use cases as part of its manual as well as automation test, automated testing practice. The fourth pillar of it, the fourth pillar of course is integration. Integration of mobile solutions within the enterprise landscape. Endeavor helps customers not just integrate mobile solutions within existing backend systems such as SAP, JD Edwards, Oracle, but also helps with the usage and implementations of MEEP, MDM, and solution accelerators such as SAP Mobile, Mobile Iron, Kony, and Xamarin. So again, to summarize, Endeavor's role as the mobility integrator has been based on the four pillars of mobile strategy, mobile user experience, mobile application development, and mobility integration. Uh, with that, I'd like to hand over to Ram to answer questions. I'm sure you would have had some questions, and if they've come up, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thanks, Avinash. Uh, there are a few questions uh, that are uh, uh, come up here. So I would like to take the first question uh, that is about Touch ID. 
So the question is whether APIs for Touch ID is available for developer and uh, the related another related question is do we need network connection uh, to uh, uh, valid authenticate or using a Touch ID. So the APIs for the developer is not uh, not available for uh, Touch ID. Uh, currently, the uh, the Touch ID uh, is being used in only the uh, uh, only for authenticating using Apple ID. Uh, and uh, we we don't need network connection uh, to get ath authenticated using Touch ID because the uh, biometric data or your fingerprint data is not stored in any server. They are uh, basically served in the de uh, uh, saved in the device, uh, and they will be authenticated in the device. So. You, you're free to use even uh, when there is no network connection. So there is another question. Uh, so what is the improvement in a, a, A7 means for iOS uh, a platform or developer? The A7 processor is fast. It's super fast. It is 2x faster than the A6 processor that is found in iPhone 5. Also, it's two times uh, improvement in graphics performance, uh, which is good uh, uh, for the game developer. And also, uh, the new iPhone 5 uh, S comes with 64-bit processor. Uh, the 64-bit processor is not much for the developer as of now, uh, because most of the applications are uh, 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 using that much of capabilities. But it is really setting up for the future uh, development uh, using this 64-bit uh, processor. Uh, so the next question is how much the multitasking uh, is helping the, uh, to save the battery. Uh, Apple with iOS 7, it has spent some time uh, making sure that uh, the multitasking is not draining a user's battery uh, to a greater extent. So what it does is it intel intelligently collects updates from different apps and uh, uh, and also it captures behavior of the user of the device uh, and runs most of the application together. Uh, when when I'm uh, when a, uh, a person is using an application, he will uh, use three four application at the same time. So uh, what it does is it it uh, uh, makes sure that all the combines all these applications and it runs at the same time to save the battery. And also it keeps an uh, eye on both the power efficiency and uh, current network uh, situation to make sure uh, that uh, uh, people don't run out of battery. So uh, another thing is if if person is worried about the battery, he has a, a centralized settings uh, in the settings application to go and uh, disable uh, background refresh of the content. So the next interesting question is uh, whether uh, iOS 7 is boosting uh, a bring your own device concept. So it's a good question. Uh, so basically, uh, with the help of uh, I mean, uh, the new features that are uh, introduced in iOS 7, uh, like uh, per app uh, VPN and restricting uh, uh, an enterprise app to use only listed third-party application. So uh, with all this, uh, I think uh, people will really uh, focus on uh, uh, bring uh, your device concept again, and not and also uh, there are. Uh, streamless uh, 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 adaptation of uh, device or uh, uh, entering devices to uh, enterprise system. When, uh, I mean, even right from the uh, when a new device is given to an employee, you can even set up uh, set him up for the enterprise and give it to him. So even enterprise owned device concept is also uh, 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 also focused in iOS seven. So the next question is about uh, using a Bluetooth low energy. Uh, so basically, the uh, why uh, our uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, is given importance over NFC. So the the couple of reason is uh, uh, the distance that uh, Bluetooth low energy can uh, uh, cover. It's around 150 feet uh, uh, compared to around 20 uh, four, uh, four centimeter of uh, NFC and also uh, uh, the all the devices are uh, by default come up with Bluetooth uh, but NFC needs a special uh, chip uh, integrated uh, with the device uh, 
uh, I think that those are the questions that that uh, we could take at this point. Uh, we we have uh, still more questions, but uh, we will uh, send uh, uh, send the answers to uh, uh, the participants uh, separately, uh, and I will hand hand it over to Tom. Thank you, Ram. We will be responding to the questions, as Ram said, to the ones we couldn't get to via email, along uh, with more detailed answers. Um, if you have any questions with regards to future webinars, be sure to send an email to events at techendeavor.com. Now, don't forget about the Platinum Plan to port your iOS 6 to iOS 7 applications within 10 business days. This offer is good until the end of November 2013, and it's for $2,000. So that's a pretty good deal. This session has been recorded and will be made available within 24 hours at techendeavor.com slash webinars. So now I want to thank all the attendees for your time and attention and hope you enjoyed this webinar and found it very informative. Please feel free to reach out to us at any time at info at techendeavor.com for more details. Thank you and goodbye.